Hi everybody, Adam here. Thanks for tuning in. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build numerous pie charts using Dash by Plotly, which is a tool to build interactive uh, data analytics apps that you can deploy on a website, on your web page, all in Python. Um, so to do this, we're going to use data that I downloaded from NYC Open Data, which is this website. I'll add to the link below. And this data is reflects all the calls made by New York City residents or people um, to rescue animals. So uh, here you can see, for example, that uh, the pie chart that I built has one dropdown, and this dropdown has several values, several options. Uh, the page loads with the uh, option species, and you can see that this analyzes all the calls. At least it just shows a, a breakdown of all the calls by species. So 59% are small mammals, 16.9% are birds, and so on and so on. We also have a breakdown of their age. 71% are adult, 23% are juvenile, and so on and so on. And the last example, we have um, a breakdown of the action that the ranger took after they received the call. So we see that almost 42% took the animals to animal care center, 23% were unfounded, and 14% uh, relocated the, the, the animal. So how did we build this? Again, by Dash, uh, using Dash by Plotly, and this code. So. Let's get right into it. Please download, click on the link below to download the code and open it on your computer so you can follow as we're doing this. So to start, you want to import all the, um, the libraries necessary. You probably don't need NumPy in this case, but in many other um, apps that I build, they do actually use NumPy. So you can take that out. Um, then you want to read the CSV file that we downloaded from NYC Open Data into a Pandas data frame. The CSV file is right down here. And each column, well, there's many columns here, and we're going to analyze a few of those columns. So, I read the CSV file into a data, Pandas data frame. Then you start the app. And then you go into the layout. This is actually how everything is going to look on the web page. So you start a div, which is HTML language to define certain sections on a web page. Uh, the first section is going to be the label. That's NYC calls for animal rescue. It's right what we put above the dropdown. And then we're going to start the dropdown. So dcc.dropdown has many properties. Uh, we're going to go over some of these. Well, we're going to go over all these properties in this code. But for a better understanding of what these properties mean and all the other properties available, um, I'm going to add the link below so you can go into the reference page and examples of the dropdown by Dash. So this is the link. Um, you'll see some examples here of code. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you will see the dropdown properties. And we're going to be using ID, um, clearable, multi, options, and I think one more. So we put the ID because every um, uh, drop down needs an ID. And then we're going to go into the options. The options are the options of the drop down that the user sees. And they actually see the label, age, animal health, and I actually, in addition to the label, you have to put the value. So if they choose, for example, age, the value is going to be age. And what do I mean by value? In this case, the value is going to refer to the column of the Excel sheet. So if they choose age, it's going to refer to the age column of the Excel sheet. If they choose animal health, it's going to refer to the animal condition column of the Excel sheet, because that's what's the, uh, the name of the column in the Excel sheet. You can change the words of the label however you want, but the value should be the value of the Excel sheet column in this case. So once you have the option, which is, as you can see, a list of dictionaries, you go into the value. The value is what you want to have the drop-down show uh, or choose automatically um, as soon as a web page is loaded. The first thing it's going to show is animal class, which means animal class right here means species. So if you go to the page and you load it, the first thing the user is going to see 
on the page is species. We put multi-false because we don't want um, there to be more than one value. It's only going to be one event. We're only going to allow the user to choose one value. And <clears throat> we put clearable because we don't want uh, the drop down to have no value. It's always going to have at least, well, not, it's always going to have one. Can't have multiple, but it's always going to have one. If this was true, then you can actually uh, click on a small X inside the drop down and you would have no value chosen. But in this case, we want a, a one value always to be chosen. The width is 50% because I want the drop down to be only half of the page and not necessarily the whole web page. And then I close my parentheses, so I'm closing my drop down. And then we go to the next section of the web page, which is the graph. Now here, as you can see, it has an ID. Um, the graph component of Dash um, has an ID like all components, um, but I haven't chosen what graph I want to put, what figure I want to put in it yet. That will do below. Close this section, this div. I close the whole uh, layout. And then we go into the callback. So the callback is really where the magic happens. The callback is actually where you are creating an interactive element or adding an interactive element to your to your app. So the callback uh, starts with has in, output and input normally. You also have state and other things, but in this case, output and input. The input is uh, what you're going to ask the user to refer to. So you're asking the user here to look to um, actually enter the component value you actually uh, component property sorry you actually you actually you're asking the user to enter the value of of what component ID of the drop down right because that's what they're going to look at so the component ID my drop down refers to the ID ha always has to be the same as a drop down ID my drop down if you call this whatever my user this has to be called my user as well so the user is going to um, choose the value of the dropdown, and that input is going to affect the output. And what is the uh, what is uh, the output component that is going to affect? It's going to affect the graph right here, the graph. And this has to be the same as this. So if you call this my graph, this has to be called my graph as well because it's the same ID. And it's going to affect what properties are going to affect of the graph. It's going to affect the figure of the graph. So according to what they put down. A figure is going to be presented on the web page. Okay, so now you need to define a function because a function is where you allow all the magic to actually to actually happen. Is actually where this is executed. So we're going to define our function as update graph. You can define it however you want, and we'll put my drop down again. Here you can put this argument can be called whatever you want to call it, but it. Remember that it always refers to the argument inside the function refers to the inputs. So here we have one input, so we'll have one argument. If you have two inputs, you'll have two arguments. Um, and it always refers to the value of the input. So my drop down here, this argument is going to refer to the value that the user is going to choose in the drop down. Okay, so before we actually start the uh, the, the pie uh, inside the function, we actually have to make a copy of our data frame. It's pretty complicated. I'm not sure I know exactly why, but uh, you can read more about it. You never want to play around with um, the data frame um, inside the function and have the data frame change inside the function according to what the user uh, chooses because it's, um, it's defined, it's a global value, so it's defined outside of the function. It's defined here, df. So you want to make sure that if you define something outside uh, or you have a data frame outside of the function, you make a copy of it inside the function and just play around with the copy. Again, you can read more about it under uh, the uh, global value section of the dash um, references. So we have the copy and now we'll go into the chart, the pie chart. So here I'm saying have plotly express we call this we imported this library called the pie chart and this I took from this is very important where did I take this from I took it from this link that I'm also going to share with you right here plotly express px and here are all the different charts and graphs and visualizations that uh, plotly express offers 
I clicked on pi and then it opened this and you have all the different parameters that go into uh, into uh, a pie chart so I chose pi because I wanted um, the information from the input to actually create a pie chart and then I have to define the properties in order to know what kind of what I want inside the pie chart or what I want the pie chart to to analyze or to break down so I want the pie chart to analyze the, the copy of this data frame the DFF meaning all the calls for uh, requesting um, rangers to help animals in New York City and I want the name I want it to be my dropdown so I want first of all let's see what the names mean names property let's go into the link names is actually an, either a name of a column of a data frame or a panda series or the value of this column so Names refers to the column, one of the columns in the Excel sheet. My dropdown is what the user is going to input right here. And remember what the user is going to input refers to the value of my dropdown. And the value of my dropdown are the columns. Remember we went all the way back here. These are the values of the dropdown. Value, value. And each value refers to a column. So if the user chooses age, label it refers to the age value of the Excel sheet so if they choose age in the input in the drop-down it will actually analyze the age column so in essence these two lines is the same as saying I want my pie chart to analyze um, all the all the calls from New York City that refer to let's say they chose age refer to the age column. So I want the, the pie chart to give me a breakdown of all the calls, of all the rows in the Excel sheet, uh, a breakdown of the age. Okay, so this thing is the same as both of these, assuming the user chose age. If the user chose something else, like animal condition, then we'll analyze the, all the calls, we'll analyze the breakdown of the animal's health or animal's condition um, from all the calls. And then a whole, we want the, the pie chart to just uh, have a 0 0.3 size hole. Um, if you put 0 0.0, the, um, the pie won't have a hole. It'll, it'll be a full pie. In this case, I want it to be, I want it to have a small hole. And then you return the pie chart. So remember, what you are returning in a function the argument of the function is always the input, where you are returning is always the output. Very, very important to remember. The argument of the function is always the input, or almost always the input, and what you're returning is almost always uh, the output. So in this case, the output is the figure, figure of the graph. So it's going to be a pie chart. And that's it. And then you finish the, the app um, or activate it with those two lines, save it, and then this is what you get. Species, let me analyze the borough. So I see that from all the calls, 48% came from Manhattan, uh, Brooklyn is red, Queens, Staten Island, Bronx. I can take the Bronx out if I want and just see the rest, put it in there. I can see the age of the animals, and this is real data. That's why it's so cool, because it's data that comes from New York City about all the animals, people that call in to save some animals. 700% are adults, 23% are juvenile. Um, animal health, we'll see that 37% of them are unhealthy, 22% had no data, um, and 17% of them were actually healthy. Um, another thing you can do, which is very interesting with, with uh, the pie chart and the dash code, is that here I'm analyzing, I'm making a copy of the data frame. So I'm actually analyzing the whole, the whole data frame, which means all the rows and all the calls. Um, but if I wanted to analyze or give a breakdown of the animal's age or health, but only for those animals that are let's say, that live in the Bronx, then I would do it here. I would say, make a copy of the data frame of all those animals 
of all those animals that live in the Bronx. So I'm going to take all those rows of all the calls of animals that live in the Bronx. And then I'll analyze the same thing. Then it can analyze whatever the user chooses. Let me save this. Wait for this to update. Go back to my pie chart. Refresh. So let's make sure it actually shows the Bronx. We'll go into Borough. So we see 100% of them are actually from the Bronx. And let's see, we'll analyze the animal health. So here we see that 30% of them were unhealthy and 26% were healthy. If I recall correctly, um, average of uh, when we analyzed, we did a breakdown of all calls, there were more um, unhealthy animals. So it seems like in the Bronx, there's fewer unhealthy animals. Action taken by Ranger. 32% animal care center, 23% relocated condition, all that. So obviously here it's hard to compare if you change it this way, but you can build, now that you know how to build this code, you can create another code where you're creating multiple pie charts, one by another, based on um, uh, making a comparison of barrels, or maybe, maybe making a comparison of, of age groups. Or you can do it inside here. Um, and have the user also choose what they want, what kind of data frame they want to analyze. Anyway, there's many different ways to play around with it. This is obviously uh, the basics. So um, start with this, start small. And if you have any questions, please let me know below. I'll, I'll do my best to help. Um, Dash is an incredible tool. You can do a lot with it. Uh, but this is really the basics, just so you know how to um, create a simple pie chart, how to download an Excel sheet, how to incorporate an Excel sheet, how to play around with the columns and analyze the breakdown of columns. But it can do much, much, much more, which we'll um, explore in the future videos. That's it. So I'm glad I could uh, be a little bit of a help. If you felt that this was um, helpful or you enjoy the video or you just want to say thank you, feel free to uh, please, please, please actually um, uh, subscribe below. It's completely free and it's the best way to say thank you because it really helps me do what I, I am passionate about, which is swimming with my shoes off. Thank you.